How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Uh, today I want to talk about being a slave to fewer things. Um, one of my favorite uh, physicists, right? And I'm not a big one on physicists or anything like that, but this guy has always fascinated me, right? Uh, from the first time I saw him. Uh, a guy called Richard Feynman. Just have, have a listen to this where he's talking about some physics of very ordinary things. This picture of atoms is a beautiful one. You can keep looking at all kinds of things this way. You see a little drop of water, a tiny drop. And uh, the atoms attract each other. They like to be next to each other. They want as many partners as they can get. Now, the guys that are at the surface have only partners on one side here, in the air on the other side, so they're trying to get in. And you can imagine this team of people, these teeming people, all moving very fast, all trying to get to have as many partners as possible. And the guys at the edge are very unhappy and nervous, and they keep pounding in, trying to get in. And that makes it a tight ball instead of a flat. And that's what, you know, surface tension, the way you, when you realize, when you see how sometimes a water drop sits like this on a table, then you start to imagine why it sits like that, because everybody's trying to get into the water. And uh, at the same time, while all this is happening, there are these atoms that are leaving the surface, and the water drop is slowly disappearing. Now, Richard Feynman stopped drinking back in 1949. He's dead a few years now, right? But, um, in 1949, he was going about his daily business. He was passing a pub or uh, an off license or something, and he felt the pull of um, the pull towards having a drink. And he understood at that moment that he was having an intense craving, right? That he was having this disconcerting feeling within himself, uh, this pull towards something which he didn't really think about uh, a few seconds before. And then all of a sudden he's got this pull um, and he didn't like it. And he stopped straight away, stopped drinking straight away. Now I'm really big on the idea of quitting cold turkey. And I don't like the term cold turkey, right? But I, I'm big on the idea of taking the pain that you're having now, right? That is gonna take you to quit drinking alcohol or quit smoking or to get away from any bad habit, right? Um, taking that pain, isolating that pain, going with it, running with it, and getting out of your life now instead of extending that pain out either by continuing on with the habit or continuously going through this cycle of looking for an easy route out of alcohol or any other drug. Um, now, it's a form of slavery, you know, it's a personal slavery that you have within your own life that so many people have got these days um, to a drug or to an external crutch, if you like, to an external tool that they use for internal purposes. Um, and it's a form of what Martin Seligman, uh, Martin, Te it's a form of what Martin Seligman called learned helplessness, where over time you become so reliant on this tool on this crutch that you're using, that you're helpless without it, that you cannot um, live your life, you can't relax without it, you can't socialize without it, you can't do so many other different things. And the more you use the tool, the more constricted your life gets, the more focused on this one crutch your life gets. And the first step to getting away from this learned helplessness state, right, this state where you are a slave to your crutch, is to stop using it, right, is to get rid of it out of your life if you keep using you know you're you're never going to get away from it you're never going to change the way that you think about these things you're never going to get rid of that slavery right you're always going to be a slave to the crutch to whatever it is and the big problem is that in the modern day there are so many different things that you can become a slave to not just uh, when you're talking about drugs alcohol cigarettes other drugs um, you can be a slave to television, you can be a slave to the internet, you know, to Facebook, to your phone, right? How many times have you seen people just walking around with their heads slammed into the phone all day long, you know? This is going to be one of the new addictions. And it might not be physically destructive, but it's mentally destructive in the sense that you're living your life, right, according to uh, being the slave to something outside of yourself. You're using something outside of yourself as a crutch. So as I say, one of the first things that you should be doing um, if you feel like you are a slave, if you feel like you're addicted, if you feel like you've got this learned helplessness 
is to stop doing the thing that is causing it in the first place, right? To stop doing the thing that is feeding the habit and the habit will disappear, right? Be a slave to fewer things. So what do I recommend? Well, one of the best ways that I know of to help you to quit drinking alcohol is for you to check out my mastermind coaching program. And for a dollar, you can get a seven day trial. You'll find great strategies to help with virtually every question or issue that you might have related to quitting drinking alcohol. You receive daily videos, my mastermind coaching forum, and even live coaching sessions. Now what this means is that you'll always know exactly what to do and when to do it, right? You get lots of help and encouragement from the other members in the forum and I'll be there every day to answer all your questions, big or small. So if you're serious about getting started, making the fastest progress possible, I strongly recommend that you at least give my mastermind coaching program a try. It's only a dollar after all and there's no obligation to continue. So why not, right? Just click on the link down below to get started. I'll see you again. Take care of yourself. Onwards and upwards. Take care. Bye now.